Hey everybody, I'm going to be reading um, The Church of the East with you. And um, I've decided instead of photocopies that I'm going to be um, just reading it to you. So um, there is a map in the beginning of the book that I think I'm going to try to print out for you guys. It's not a very good one, so I may see if I can get one that's better. But this is Asia, and this is what we're going to be talking about. And reading the back of the book, the gospel spread west, we Christians are told. And its propagation was, at first, limited by the boundaries of the Roman Empire. But this standard western view is wrong. There was a church in the east. Its influence began and ended far beyond the borders of the Roman Empire. And so that was, it was, it was far more widespread than most of us can possibly imagine. Such countries like Afghanistan and Tibet, which are spoken of today as still closed to the gospel, were centers of Christian activity long before Muhammad was born or the Krishna legend had ever been heard of. And so that's what this book is about, of the evidence of the Christians that were in Japan. Um, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to go till about, from about six or 700 years after Christ, it's going to start. So the first thing I want to do is read the introduction with you. Um, in Acts 2, 9 through 11, Luke writes that Parthenia, Parth Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia and Arabs, were among those present in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, the birthday of the Christian church. These Jews who were gathered together from every nation under heaven were devout men, and we are told they asked one another, what do these things mean? Later, about 3,000 souls were added to the number of believers. Other than this passage in the New Testament, however, Christians in the West never hear of a church in the East. Most church history books written in a European language at least imply that the gospel only spread West, and though it spread rapidly, the boundaries of the Roman Empire limited its propagation. To quote only one historian, and this is a quote from the historian, the history of Christianity would appear on the globe of the world as a shadow about 2,000 miles wide. As it moves north or west, it surrenders in the south and east. Arab Muslims took North Africa and Spain on Europe's southern flank while Irish missionaries were spreading the gospel in northern Europe. Turkish Muslims took Byzantium just before Western Christianity crossed the Atlantic. Enlightenment paganism took Europe while Protestant Christianity was spreading westward in North America. The only major exceptions in history have been Catholicism's re reconquest of Spain and the Greek revolt. Yet this standard Western view is wrong. There was a church in the East. Its influence began and ended far beyond the borders of the Roman Empire, and it was far more widespread than most of us realize. The difficulty is to find a place in all Asia where Eastern Christians are said to be still closed to the gospel such as Afghanistan and Tibet, were centers of Christian activity long before Muhammad was born or the Krishna legend was invented. And just um, kind of a note, you guys know who Muhammad was with the Islamic religion. Um, and his birth is dated somewhere around 570 to 632 years after Christ. Krishna is one of the most popular Hindu gods worshipped throughout India. Um, and they believe he was born to rid the world of evil and to give delight to his friends. So persecution surpassing anything ever experienced by the Church of the West stimulated the Church of the East, the official designation of this church. Wonderful monastic missionary schools also nourished it. There is evidence of Christians in Japan before the close of the 8th century, which is around 700 years AD. Equally well documented are the strong Christian communities, Christian kings, and Christian generals in China and its surrounding countries before the middle of the 7th century, which is about 600 years after Christ. The same is true of Siberia, India, Sri Lanka, Myanmar, or which is Burma, the Straits of Malaysia, Malacca, which is part of Indonesia, and Mongolia. In fact, we know that at least one of the Mongol, also called Tartar or Turk emperors, were, was a Christian, while the wives of several others were Christians as well. Um, so there are two purposes of this book. First, to tell about the missionary zeal of this church from about the end of the second century um, until the beginning of the 14th century. And second, to consider the reasons for its eclipse and almost total disappearance from the greater part of the area in which it had once held sway. One question to consider before we begin the study, however, is why we have never heard of the Church of the East. We are unaware of its existence mainly because the authors of our history books permitted the heads of state of the Roman Empire to cloud their vision. They allowed the political leaders of the Roman Empire to convince them that the Roman Empire dominated the whole world and that's outside the range of its operations. There was nothing of importance to record. 
To the east of the Euphrates, however, there existed an empire, first under the Parth Parthians, then under the Persians, that rivaled Rome, both in extent and power. It extended to and included a considerable part of modern India. It was the only empire able to withstand Roman aggression. And to begin our study of the Church of the East, we turn our attention to this foreign empire. And so that's where we're going to start. Chapter one is going to be the church in Persia.